minicamp been going for you so far? It's been going well. I'm um, enjoying this process, enjoying being out here with all the guys, um, working every single day to get better. Um, you know, we didn't have our best day yesterday, the first day of practice, but we were able to go to walk through, um, clean up some things last night, and then come out here and improve 1% better every single day. Um, that's what we talk about is just trying to get better at every single step that we do, every single process. Um, so, you know, I was I'm not going to say I was thrilled with today, um, but today definitely went a lot better than yesterday. How would you describe your leadership style? We heard from Drake and John about that, but how would you describe your leadership style? Yeah, I would just say um, kind of by two things. One, by, by being vocal. Two, kind of by action. Um, you know, these guys see that, you know, I'm in the playbook 24-7. You know, I, I got it down pretty good. Um, so, you know, when they're coming up to me, asking me questions and just being able to, to fire it off back at them real quick and, and them understand that I have a good grasp and knowledge of the offense, um, you know, that, that builds trust within, you know, the offense, within our relationships within each other. Um, and then by actually just going out there and executing the game plan, um, being able to go out there and step in the huddle and say the, the play call with confidence, um, get to the line and make the right play call. So I would say just in, in that way, that's how, you know, my leadership style is right now. Even when you're just surrounded by other rookies, I wouldn't think that would necessarily be an easy thing to demonstrate on day one. But does that come easily to you? Is that just natural? Or? Yeah, that's that's just kind of how I've been, you know, throughout grade school, high school, and college. Um, you know, we're all young adults out here um, and playing a, a children's game and a game that we love. And, and so, um, you know, as a quarterback, and you know, that's kind of your role is, you know, naturally is time to, to be that leader. Um, and so. To be able to be and do that naturally without making it forced or, um, you know, making it too hard on other guys, I think, you know, that that's what comes easy for me. When you say you weren't thrilled with yesterday and then even today, what what weren't you thrilled about? Was it the level of play, guys not working hard? What did you think? Yeah, just, just execution, um, just being able to to get lined up, especially yesterday. Um, you know, whether it was a legal formation, false start, whatever it may be, pre-snap. You know, we talked this morning in the team meeting that, you know, teams are going to lose a lot of games. Um, they're not going to win a lot of games. And what I mean by that and what coach means by that is that, you know, in the, the pre-snap penalties is going to kill a lot of people in games. Um, and, you know, a lot more people lose those games from pre-snap penalties and, and dumb mistakes than they do win games. Um, so, you know, just coming out here and trying to be as perfect as we can, um, you know, that's where I feel like we can obviously improve and get better on. Talk about getting into the playbook and feeling confident in it. How did you kind of prepare for these two days and kind of getting a step up on that playbook? Yeah, I think we got the playbook about a week and a half ago. Um, so just really diving into it, started off with just general information, formation, huddle, cadence. Um, so, you know, for me in formations, I use poker chips. Um, and that, that was taught to me by Jordan Palmer, my trainer. So just being able to use poker chips. Um, I know Drake, Drake's my roommate right now, and he's got them in his room using them because he trains with Jordan too. Um, so just being able to use them, move them around, that's what helped me really pick up the base uh, information of the offense. Um, and then having meetings with Coach London every single day on Zoom, um, just learning the true ins and outs of it. And then obviously coming out here and, and putting, you know, putting it from paper to field, uh, that makes it you know, a lot easier to go out here and learn. Yes, I forget where I read it, but one of the national writers wrote, I guess it was the last week or so, that part of when you were talking to teams, that you had given them a plan of how you planned on unseating a veteran quarterback. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> unseating a veteran quarterback. What what went into that plan? Like, was that something that you came up with over like the last few months? Was that something you had for years? No, I think um, you know, I think what, what you're talking about is I was saying, you know, that's kind of just how my my career has been in, in this football world from high school to college. Um, in high school, I, I started um, freshman as a freshman, started JV as a sophomore. Um, then I went to a junior. I had two seniors above me. Um, so I had to learn from them and battle with them to earn a spot. Then come to college, um, I redshirt my true freshman year. Um, and then I have a redshirt senior um, during my redshirt freshman year um, that I'm learning from and battling with. And then so I have to go beat him out to earn my spot. Um, and then obviously continue to, to improve my game every single year throughout college. Um, and then, you know, like I said, now we're here. Um, where obviously, you know, there's not another younger guy with me, um, but a, a vet, an older guy. And so, you know, I'm excited just really to, to come out here and learn from guys like Marcus, learn from guys like Felipe, not only from on the field stuff, but off the field. You know, we talk about leadership, um, learn. Those are, you know, two great guys to learn from, from leadership. Um, so I'm really excited just to come out here and just learn from those guys. Can You're talking about just in terms of the we of things that needed to improve from day one to day two, but when you kind of looked at your performance from yesterday to today, what are some of the things as a leader you said, hey, I need to kind of tweak that so we can have a better day two? 
um, as far as what? I'm sorry. Just in general, you were saying like there were mistakes that were made mm -hmm. and you didn't want to make those again mm -hmm. today from a we perspective. So I was just asking from a you from perspective, perspective, what do you say, hey, I want to adjust or make some decisions from day one to day two? Yeah, I think yesterday there might have been about two play calls that I might have messed up in the huddle. Just, you know, first time hearing it from the helmet, giving it to a huddle and then lining up and running it. Um, so, so just getting better from that standpoint. Um, and then footwork, some of the footwork is a little new to me. So just being able to um, really understand what's going on up front and then kind of match it up with my footwork in the backfield um, to be able to have timing with the wide receivers. Um, that's something that I'm continuing to work on. That's something that I continue to work on right here after practice. Um, and, and so that's something that I'll continue to work on. And then just a fun question for you. Day one, day two, what are some of the fun things, uh, you know, being that this is your first rookie camp, you're like, wow, that's kind of cool. Didn't expect that to happen. Um, nothing so far. I think you know. You can tell us. Yeah, no, this is just this football right now. So you know, this is something that we love to do. This is something we signed up for. So you know, wake up at six o'clock, go to bed at about ten o'clock, and uh, you know, that's what we love. That's what we enjoy. Speaking hey, of waking up at six o'clock, your doormates say you're the first one up, and you're not necessarily quiet about it. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing up so early? Uh, you know, I try to be the first one in the building. Uh, I think Vrabel will be me in here today. Um, but, you know, just getting up, shower and brush my teeth, um, get in here, eat some breakfast, get treatment um, and get my arm right. Um, and then get in the film, get in the film room with Coach London, um, our other quarterback, too. And so, you know, just being able to, to improve every single day. Um, you talk about leadership, talk about, um, you know, learning the offense and really mastering the offense. And that's what it takes is to, to be the first one in every single day. Ritter, I, mean, you, uh, I just want to kind of follow up about the whole um, taking um, quarterback's position. So you said that, um, how do you find that balance between, okay, I'm trying to learn from you because I've never been in the league before. But obviously I can pick up some, maybe some things that I can help apply to my game and, and possibly get better versus I'm trying to take your spot. Like, how do you balance that? Respect. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. Um, coming out here, you know, Marcus is a guy that's played a lot of games in the NFL, um, had a, obviously a tremendous college career. So, you know, you have to give respect where respect is due. Um, and, and that's one guy that, you know, that I have to. Um, so just being able to come out here and learn, um, but just know at the end of the day, and he knows too that, I mean, it's obviously a competition or else we wouldn't be here. Um, and so, you know, at the end of the day too, it's, it's not up to us who makes that decision. Um, it's up to the coaches. So if we go out here and we both put our best foot forwards and we leave it out of our hands and we leave it out of our hands, but at the end of the day, um, we're working not only to better ourselves, but to better each other um, in everything that we do. From a quarterback perspective, what's the what's the advantage of having taller receivers? Because you look at when you get when you get to training camp, yeah. I mean, you're basically playing with like a bunch of NBA level, NBA wings in terms of height. Like, what's the advantage of that? Um, being able to go up and get the ball. Right, yeah. um, no, but you know, being able to to just make plays when plays aren't there to be made. Um, you know, play scrambles down, break down, and, and you know, it's a one on one matchup. Just trusting in your guys and, and knowing. Um, that you know, maybe if it was a smaller guy, that maybe he's not jumping as high, or maybe they got a little bit of a matchup with a, a bigger corner, whatever it may be. Um, but just having that catch radius and know that you're being able to throw it anywhere and then go make the play, um, I think that's huge. Who would you describe? The most out there among your teammates, has one of your, anyone out there stood out to you just in terms of skill or what they've done out there? Um, you know, I think I think everyone's kind of just put their best foot forward. I want to say there's one person, you know, other than. Uh, not one person other than, but just, you know, there's not one person out there who's really, you know, put their kind of been that, you know, oh my gosh, there's that guy. Um, but, you know, we're, we're going through walkthroughs, we're going through jog throughs, so nothing's full speed. We don't have pads on. Um, so, you know, it's kind of hard to determine that right now. Um, but, you know, I love the way from offense, defense, and special teams, the way everyone comes out and works, um, the way everyone comes out and just is ready to grind, ready to go. How would you describe the way you play, your mentality on the field? Yeah, I would say it's um, like a, a, a fierce cannon, but a calm cannon, um, just ready to go off. Um, but no, once I step on that field, it's almost like, you know, a flip switches, um, you know, throughout practice and, and throughout the all, all throughout the week. Um, you know, I'm obviously locked in focus and, you know, having a little fun with it. But, um, you know, once that Sunday hits, it, it's like a, a flip switches and, and, you know, it's go time. Um, but, you know, just energetic and, and calm, cool and collective, but also got a little ball of fire lit under me. Is that, how does that manif how does that ball of fire manifest itself? Are you a trash talker? Are you on your teammates hard? What's the um, what's that like on the field with Desmond? Rose? I would say a little bit of uh, a little bit of juice before the game, um, just as far as music, you know, getting hyped up. Um, but you know, I just know what the moment is, what the stage is. Um, just 
know it's a football game. This is something that we love to do. This is something that you know we want to do. And obviously, I want to win every single game. Um, and so, you can't go into a game, you know, one thinking that a team is better than you, um, two thinking that, you know, you're not going to be out there, go out there and be the best. So, you know, I try to just get in the mindset that every time I step on the field, I'm going to be the best player on the field. Um, and that's where you kind of got to have a. a crooked mind sometimes because uh, you know you physically mentally whatever you might you might not be the best player on the field but you got to tell yourself that who are you uh who are you listening to for the game who am i listening to, yeah, let's go to. uh maybe a little young thug a little gunner a little baby okay so. <laughs> 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 First impression. Yeah, I, I think he's a great guy. I think he's a guy that's going to help out our team. Um, and, and, you know, he's a worker. He's a guy that comes in and works every single day to be better. Um, and so I'm excited that, you know, he's with us. Are you a guy who will take that number 74 pick and kind of write that down somewhere and always remember it and try to use it as a chip on your shoulder? Or are you a guy that won't think about it again? Um, yes and no. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I was the second quarterback taken off the board. I obviously wanted to be the first one. Um, but kind of saw how this draft went, um, saw that, you know, everyone was slipping and, you know, a lot of wide receivers taking whatever it may have been. And I'm just blessed to, to have this opportunity to be out here, play this game I love in a, in a beautiful city, a, a beautiful place, beautiful facility. Um, so, you know, yes, I am going to take it and use it as a chip. Um, but no, that's not, you know, something I think about every single day. Something that stuck out to, I, I can't remember who I was talking to, but they said winning is contagious with Desmond. When you hear that, what does that kind of make you think? Yeah, that makes me think that, you know, whatever I'm doing, I want to win in. Um, and that's just who I've been ever since I was a, a little kid to, to now. Um, it doesn't matter. I want to win. Um, and that's what I not only try to, you know, feed on to everyone else and everyone on the team, um, but try to instill that in them too, that just go out there and be a winner. Like I said, you know, if there's one person on this team that don't think that they're the best person when they step on this field, then we're at a disadvantage already. So let's get the guys that think, you know, we're always the best. Like, let's go be the best because we put in the work to be the best and, and then go prove it. What excites you most about this system and your fit within it? Uh, I think just the opportunity that, you know, that's in front of us. For me and myself, it's a completely new system, completely new everything. Um, and it's kind of funny. I, I was at the Senior Bowl and it's kind of in a, a similar system to this. And so coming in when, you know, talk about learning the playbook and stuff, some of the stuff was a lot similar. Um, and, and so for me to, kind of started the senior bowl and have a little introduction there. It was really good and, and made it a lot easier for me to come here and pick things up really quickly. We know it's still new, but uh, how's your connection with Drake? I mean, what do you like about this guy? Yeah, it's good. He's big. Um, like we just <laughs> talked about, he, he's big um, and he, he's fast and he's smart. Um, and, you know, I think we're going to be able to grow our connection a lot more. Um, we have a, a common trader of Jordan Palmer. Um, so we'll be out there this summer working together and, and just fine tuning things. Um, so I'm excited to see where that goes, excited to see where that, you know, not only relationship, but brotherhood kind of continues to develop over the years. Did you guys all work with each other before? Uh, no, so we were supposed to, but during draft prep process, but it never got um, done. But it was just kind of funny how, you know, things worked out that we were working with the same trainer and everything. So it's wild. How many times something? did you meet with Coach London on Zoom before you got here? Uh, it was probably about seven days, so probably right at a week, maybe five, five to seven times, um, once a day. Um, and, and so, you know, we were, like I said, we were just going through um, general information, motions, cadence, huddles, um, and, and then protections, um, and, and then started to do um, defense ID, defensive recognition of how we ID our defense here um, and how things are broken down into film. Um, and then we slowly started to get into concepts, and then next thing you know, we were here. So. I was excited. Desmond, with, with you being a new father and all, like obviously there are a lot of things that come at you that you never experienced before, and it kind of takes a little while for you to kind of figure out things out. Do you feel that being a father can, in some way, help you? How do you feel like that can help you be a better football player? Patience. <laughs> uh, patience for sure. One, not everything is going to be perfect. Um, you know, and that's who I am as a person. I always want to be perfect in everything I do. So when I make, you know, a little mistake or a little mistake is made by like, you know, that kind of gets under me a little bit. So, you know, my, my baby girl, Layton, she's definitely helped me out with that a little bit as, as far as, uh, you know, her not staying on her schedule that she needs to stay on and stuff. Um, but no, you know, she, she's my daughter and I love it. So one more. 
What were the weeks after minicamp look like for you leading up to the next OTA? Are you getting some of the guys together? Or are you wrestling? What are you kind of doing? Find a place to live? Yeah, so that's, that's probably number one is finding a place to live around here. Um, so hopefully we can get that done. And then, like I said, I think uh, a couple of the guys going out to California, um, Drake I know for sure, but I'm trying to get some of the other guys to come out there um, so we can get some working out there. Just you or is Marcus going too? Uh, I haven't talked to Marcus yet. So whenever he shows up for the maybe it's Monday, whatever it may be, um, that'll actually be my first time, you know, introducing myself to him, meeting him for the first time. So I'm excited. Have you spoken to him at all? No, no that's why I said not at all. So I'm excited to meet him for the first time, like I said. He's a guy that I've looked up to for a while, so I'm excited to meet him as, as a role model, as a player, as a, as a, as a teammate, um, and, and as a competitor, so I'm excited. Yeah, hey, Aaron, how's uh, rookie minicamp been going and uh, mm -hmm. so far from being uh, out here on the field with uh, your new team? Yeah, I mean, so far it's going great. I'm just happy to be out here. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while since I actually got to play football, so just being out here, uh, practicing, getting better, uh, could have asked for anything better. Arthur was talking about how this is essentially a good time to check your mentals and, and see how quickly you can install things. How, how do you feel like that part of this two-day period is going for you? Well, I, I think in terms of my mental, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, past two days, just learning the scheme and getting better with the technique in terms of like different steps that I have to adjust, stuff that's different from college. So little by little, I think I'm getting up to uh, speed with everything. What's your kind of first impression of Dean Pease and, and what he's hoping to, to put you through over the next kind of year, in your rookie year? <laughs> I mean, I love it. The, the plan is uh, for me to get better every single day, one step at a time. So I'm here for the process. You said the technique is a little different. Is that because you're playing a different position or because they're asking you to do things different? Uh, I think this is a little different, but it's not that big of a difference. I'm just saying in terms of like steps that you have to take. Uh, college, I took a different step. I lined up a little bit differently. So it just, uh, it's the football at the end of the day. It's just a matter of getting the little details right. How did you line up differently? Uh, well, in college, I was... I was partially through with stands and uh, two points, two points at a time. Where now, for ninety percent of the time, I'm in the two point stands. So it's just in the plan of one in the two point stands. That's kind of the little details that. What do you think it takes to be a, a an elite pass rusher in the NFL? I mean, so there are very so few who are good at it. Yeah. Is it physicality? Is it a mentality? What is it? What do you think it takes to be a really good pass rusher? Uh, I think it comes down to consistency. Uh, uh, average pass which they can do uh, one play at a time, but consistent pass which they can do uh, almost every single play. So it's, it really comes down to being consistent and working on your craft and studying, studying the game. Do you think you play with an edge? I definitely do. I, I believe so. you think that's one of the things that attracted these guys to you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I hope so. I, I take a lot of pride in how I approach every single day, and now I make sure I leave it, everything I have on the field every time I step on the field. So. What does playing with an edge mean, mean to you on Saturdays or Sundays, whatever the day may be? What, uh, how does that it, manifest itself? Uh, for me, I would say not taking the game for granted, and knowing that every time you step on the field, uh, you have an opportunity that don't not every single people get the opportunity to go out there. So you can't take the game for granted. So every time you step out there, you got to give everything you have. Third and long, what's your go-to pass with me? Got to go with the speed of swipe and any, any counter that comes with it. Uh, what is, what is, like, you know, there's always a, you know, a kind of, I guess, a science to whether or not certain skill sets going to transfer from playing on Saturdays to Sundays. What yeah. do you think one of the things that is going to transfer for you that's going to help you on 1 o'clock every Sunday? Well, I think it comes down to how I approach uh, pass rushing. And for me, I've always been about how I study my opponent and translate it into the, uh, onto the field. And I think I'm agile enough, I'm versatile enough to be able to do different things. So as long as I, uh, I keep that mindset and study my opponent the way I'm supposed to, I think I should be fine moving forward. Have you politic to the Coach P's about dropping in the coverage at all, or you want to <laughs> stay, stay on the edge? I mean, I, I, third down? I can do a little bit of everything, so whatever asking me at that particular time, I'm, I'm ready to do it. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your yeah. mindset in approaching the expectations with, that come with being such a high draft pick? Well, I'm, I'm confident in my potential, and I know that I'm going to come in and put the work in. I, I don't expect uh, any handout. I have to, uh, one of my coaches used to say, you have to earn your keep. So I intend to come out here every day and, and work and try to earn my spot.
It could be an advantage for having to be under somebody like Dean Pease with all of the Hall of Famers that he's coached, but also mm -hmm. being able to play with a Deion Jones or even a Grady Jarrett, guys that have edge and have yeah. really played at the high level. What could that be for you? What, what positive could that be for you, especially in your rookie season, to be able to play with those guys in defense? Yeah, so I say as a young as a young player, as a rookie, there's a lot of uh, expectation and, and, and knowledge that comes with it. So having uh, coaches that's been there, done it before, and veterans on the team, uh, I just want to lean on them, kind of learn as much as possible because knowledge is power. So the more knowledge I'm able to gain, the, the, the better I'll be on the field. You may have answered this already, you know, right after the draft, but are there NFL players you specifically like to watch or study as you kind of get ready yeah. to now play in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, I study guys like Vaughn Miller, T.J. Watt, uh, Nick Bosa. Some of the guys, like I said, it comes down to being consistent. Those are the guys that have been consistent over the years, and I study them a lot, try to see different moves that they do, try to incorporate that into my own game, just uh, just a student, student in the game, just trying to get better. And making that jump from Temple to Penn State, how is that adjustment now mm -hmm. going from Penn State to the NFL? How has that kind of helped you prepare? Well, I will say uh, making – it's not a similar transition, but making a jump uh, prior from Temple to Penn State, uh, there was a learning curve that happened along the way. So now I'm sure there will be a learning curve that happened from college to the NFL. So I say, so I say pretty much uh, I'm expecting that learning curve. And good and bad, I can't let anything discourage me. I just got to uh, stick to what I know, and that's putting the work in. You mentioned that learning curve. A lot of times rookies are sitting behind veterans and everything. But your draft status, you see the depth chart here, you're probably going to get to play a lot of snaps. How, how motivating is that, that you should be able to play a lot of it? I, I mean, uh, I'm motivated to come in and get better, uh, improving my craft. Uh, that's the first step. That's where it started at, uh, learning the scheme, getting better. So uh, I, I don't want to look too much ahead. I want to live in the, in the pre present moment. Uh, that's getting better. Just these couple days, I mean, it's gone by so quick. Uh, mostly the playbook. Um, my, my head was spinning the first day, um, but I'm getting better. And uh, today was a lot better than the first day, which is always good. And uh, it's just being able to take coaching and, and, you know, bringing that out to the field the next day. Tyler says that you, Drake, and Desmond are all roommates. We are. Uh, so what has that been like for you getting to know the guys? So yeah, um, you know, I have three, three good buddies already, so it's super nice having them. Um, I told Desmond, don't be so loud in the morning because um, he's like jumping around the room. Uh, but he, he said he said he'll work on it or something. But, uh, you yeah, know, it's super nice. You know, we get to um, we go practice and then walk throughs and eat dinner and then we'll go back to the rooms and watch basketball and go over some film and and talk about that. So it's nice. What, what's he doing jumping around the room? Like it's he just wakes up early and uh, I, I don't know. He's just loud. So I, I had to tell him to quiet down. Like how so is he like just talking to himself? Is he, is he just like, is he running into things? Like, what's, it, what's he doing? I don't like, know. It's, loud somehow. it's like a bull in a china show. I don't even know how to describe it. Um, I, I'm not sure. How would you describe the way you play? Uh, I'd say I'm a dominant run blocker, and uh, I'm excited to showcase uh, my, my game in the passing game as well. Uh, I'm excited to contribute in any way that the coaches asked me to do in, on special teams units, um, on punt, KOR, KOC, whatever they asked me to do, and then, you know, uh, on the line, hand in the dirt, and then split out wide blocking or making plays. What's your mentality out there? Um, gritty, hard nose. No one's going to outwork me. Um, I've always adopted that uh, mentality, and I've always carried it um, from my high school years, uh, college years, and so on. And I, I feel like it's brought me success. Is Lee Smith a guy you had paid any attention to prior to coming here? Definitely. Uh, Lee Smith, Jack Doyle, um, those are you know two dominant run blockers that I've always looked up to. Uh, it was pretty cool watching Lee this last year. Uh, in Atlanta, and um, you know he's so technically sound, he's able to do things a lot of tight ends can't do, um, which is unique and it's special, and you know which, which is what I'm trying to accomplish as well. You foresee that being sort of your role with this offense? Uh, I wouldn't put any label on it. You know, uh, Coach Rags talks about positionless football, yeah. so that's what I kind of I'm positionless. Whatever they ask me to do, split out um, at the one, at the two spot, uh, hand in the dirt like Lee does. Um, I'll be ready to do it. Did it feel kind of surreal, like just making this drive up here and going to minicamp? I mean, it wasn't that long of a drive for you, obviously. Yeah, it was like 40 minutes. Um, not bad at all. It, it was surreal. Um, it's super cool how everything has worked out, you know, high school to college to here. Um, it's nice for my family and everything as well. Uh, they will, they'll be able to come to my games and everything. Have you kind of felt um, 
that UGA has kind of helped you prepare for even minicamp? Have you felt any differences or similarities in the practices? Yeah, I definitely see some similarities, uh, especially schedule-wise, just, you know, being here um, all, all the time. Uh, and that's, that's a good thing. I enjoy that. I love football and, uh, you know, getting better at it. So uh, at Georgia, we were constantly going from meeting to meeting, and that's what we're doing here. Um, you know, talking to different coaches and everything, so it's nice. Coach, We've heard what some are of you the... hoping to take away from the rookie mini camp and you know, going go to the off season program and the mini camp and training camp? What, what, what do you want to take out of this weekend? I'm I'm just trying to get better uh, on my technical game uh, and then get the playbook down as much as I can. I was able to you know use the two weeks leading up to mini camp. I got my iPad and I was able to just start going over the material and whatnot. And then uh, you know now I'm just trying to translate it to on the field. We've heard some of the West Coast guys uh, commenting on the humidity here this week. Can yeah. you clue them in as to what's to come? Yeah, I said <laughs> this isn't anything yet. Um, yeah, so Tyler was talking about that. Drake was talking about that. And um, it's funny, yeah, so this isn't really anything to me. Uh, but I told them August, just wait and, uh, and wait and you'll see. What are kind of your study habits when it's coming to get to know the playbook? How do you kind of digest that information? I try to be a first first one in, last guy out, and that's what I've done these two days. Um, thanks to Desmond, I'll be up early with him, and uh, we'll get over here around 7, and um, I'll be in the tight end room looking over the material, and then uh, late at night I'll be I'll be here, and then we just make the walk back. But um, just trying to uh, outwork everyone and just trying to um, be a student of the game, uh, that's what I really try to do. And whether that's writing on the whiteboard, uh, you know, writing my notebook, um, you know, making flashcards, whatever. I, I try to do everything. Who do you see kind of emerge as a, a leader out in this rookie plant, uh, class in the past couple days? I see myself as a leader. On top of that, definitely Desmond. Um, I feel like he and I have a strong connection already. Uh, we're trying to bring guys along, and uh, I think it's going really well. What's the most interesting thing you've learned about Desmond in the last, I don't know, 48, 72 hours? How long you've been here? Most interesting thing? Uh, you know, I don't know because you know, you see him at Cincinnati, we played against him. I got to give him uh, some crap for that. Uh, but he, I just have a good buddy in him. And uh, not that I didn't think I was going to have that in him, but um, just right away we connected and uh, it's nice having that. Did you talk before you guys got here? No, we didn't. You did? No. How have you seen him lead? How, pardon? How have you seen him lead? Uh, just vocally, he, he's not afraid to um, speak his mind. And then after practice, we'll be going over stuff. and. Uh, He'll, he'll be organizing uh, the receivers, the running backs. Um, he has a good grasp on the playbook, um, and he's confident, uh, which is always good. How nice has it been just to have Justin Schaefer uh, with you out here? And does that help you at all, even just kind of getting to know the playbook and having him there? Yeah, it's super nice uh, having one of my good buddies from Georgia here. He's actually my locker buddy over there. Uh, so we get to hang out before practice together. And then obviously we're on offense, so we spend a lot of time together in meetings. Uh, but it's nice because we're able to talk about all things outside of football um, and just talk about, um, you know, how we never – we always dreamed of this, but now it's here. So uh, it, it's super cool having him. You said your second day went really well. Where did you feel most comfortable um, today compared to yesterday? I'd say the playbook. The first day, um, you know, to be honest, my head was spinning, uh, and that's okay. It's just being able to, to learn from mistakes, uh, be coachable, uh, which I feel like I was and just carry, carry those mistakes and, and improve on them, which is what I did today.